Hey guys, Mark here. Welcome back to my beginner's guide for the Walker V370 D01. Um, so this video, I'm just going to go over a couple things about setup, uh, some of the pre-flight checks, just to make sure that the helicopter is going to perform as it should when you get ready to go fly it. So when you first get one of these, first thing you want to do is start charging the main battery here. Very simple process here. So you got your AC adapter, you just go ahead, plug this into the charger, and then you got your battery, you just plug this into the front here. Now, when you plug the battery in, the battery charger into the wall, you'll have a red light. When you plug your battery in, that red light is going to start blinking. When the battery's done charging, that red light is going to turn green, and then you're good to go. Now, while that's charging, you can take the time to go through and just check the couple screws on the helicopter, make sure they're tight. You don't want to have any loose screws on here. Um, and then another thing about batteries here, you need batteries for the transmitter. Uh, it takes eight AA batteries, and it's got a little battery holder back here. Um, I would recommend getting rechargeable batteries for this. Uh, that way, anytime the battery voltage goes low and on screen here, it'll actually tell you what voltage your batteries have. Um, so anytime that gets low, you can go ahead and recharge the batteries up. You don't want to let the battery voltage in the transmitter get low, because if it ever gets low, then you may lose contact with the helicopter causing a crash. So like I said, rechargeable batteries are probably going to be best bet for you for the transmitter. Um, now, again, uh, when you get the battery all charged, it just slides right into the back here. And to go over a couple of things to set up here, you have to turn the helicopter on. Now, to bind the helicopter to the transmitter, it's a very simple process. What you're going to do is you turn the transmitter on, and within 10 seconds of turning your transmitter on, you plug the helicopter in. Now, if you don't plug the helicopter in within that 10 seconds, you're going to have to unplug the helicopter, turn the transmitter off, turn the transmitter back on, and then plug this in within 10 seconds. So. All right. Now the transmitter is bound, or the transmitter is bound to the helicopter. So this all works now. So what we're going to do is just check a couple things here, and what we we'll do is take the canopy off and give you a closer look at what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, now you can get a really good look at the servo arm here. So basically, what you're going to do, um, you just want to make sure, you just check in to make sure that the servo arm is as close to 90 degrees to the servo as it can be. Now, if it's off just a little bit, that's not a problem. If it's off a lot, you may want to take this, uh, unscrew the nut screw right here, pop the servo arm off and try repositioning it. But a lot of times from the factory, you're not going to have to do that. But just check to make sure that both servo arms are as close to 90 degrees to the servo as they can be. Then what you want to do is you just want to make sure that the swash plate is level to the frame. So when you position the helicopter like this, you make sure the swash plate is level this way. Okay. Rotate like this, you need to make sure the swash plate is level this way. And if it's not, you just adjust either this link or this link to level the swash plate. Then, moving up a little bit further, just want to make sure that the swash plate here is level with the blade grips up here on top. And again, from the factory, all you're doing is just checking to make sure that this stuff is level. You're not really going to have to mess with any of it. If you do, you know, it's just a matter of popping the links off and turning, twisting them to move them, you know, either lengthen or shorten the links. I also want to go over what these little dials here are for because it's kind of important to understand their functions here. So this top one here marked elevator aileron extent. What this does is this actually controls the amount of movement your servos have. So you can increase and decrease the amount of overall servo movement by adjusting this dial up or down. Now in the beginning you don't want to have the servos move very far because the more the servos move the more responsive the helicopter is going to be. So you can kind of keep it down but as you get better at flying especially if you're flying outdoors and you want your helicopter to be very responsive you would turn that dial up and that's going to make the servos move further uh, and again, making the helicopter more responsive. Now, these next three dials 
aileron, elevator, and tail. These are for the gyros that control uh, or that you know help in the stability of the helicopter. Um, now, when you first start off, it's going to be better to keep them on the kind of high side because the higher they are, the more stable the helicopter is going to be to a point. Now, if you adjust those gyros too high, the helicopter is just going to shake and vibrate. So you don't want them up too high. Now, the lower they are, um, the more responsive the helicopter is going to be. Um, but when you get them too low, then they it just creates a lot of problems. So you don't you definitely don't want them on the low side. Um, now, also here you got two little switches. Uh, this bottom one marked aux. That one auxiliary there you don't use. But this one right here, balance, that one um, you're probably going to use. Now basically what it is, when the switch is on, when this little uh, switch is over on the two position, the gyros for your aileron and elevator are on. Now if you turn them, if you turn the switch to off, you know, flick it this way, that is supposed to disable the aileron and elevator gyro. Um, so basically when you first start off is you'd want to leave them all on and then as you get better the whole theory is is you can turn the aileron and elevator gyros off and you know again just kind of makes the helicopter more responsive. Now um, I don't find that there's a huge difference when you turn them off. I still think that they're still active a little bit just not nearly as much as when they are on. Um, so again, you know, the gyros there, you know, when you first start out with, leave the switch to, you know, for the balance mode on, and the gyros, you're gonna wanna leave them just a little bit on a higher side until you get better. And as you get better at flying, you can turn them down and the helicopter becomes a little bit more responsive. But really at that point, you're probably gonna be looking at upgrading to a collective pitch helicopter if you want a very responsive helicopter because Fixed pitch helicopters, just that's not really what they are. So, but that's just the the what you know what these uh, little dials do. Um. All right. So now that you know about making sure that your servo arms are 90 degrees to the servos, making sure your swash plate's level, making sure that your blade grips are level with the swash plate. The only other thing you need to check before you get ready to fly is you want to make sure that your servos are moving in the proper direction. And this is easy enough as if you have your transmitter right next to your helicopter just like this, when you push forward on your cyclic stick, you should see your swash plate tilt forwards. If you push backwards, you should see the swash plate tilt backwards. If you push to the left, you should see the swash plate tilt to the left. If you, you know, if you push to the right, so you should see the swash plate tilt to the right. Now, if for any reason it's not doing that, just go into the servo reversing menu and reverse either the aileron or the elevator servo, whichever one you had to do reverse, uh, but to make sure that that way to get everything moving in the proper direction. Um, so after you've, you know, you got everything working in the proper direction and you've checked those other things, you're great to start flying this thing. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention, uh, talk about real quickly here, is the dual rake switches here on the transmitter as well as this little knob. So what these do, these are, they have these here to try to make uh, learning to fly just a little bit easier. So now this switch, what this does, this is for your cyclic stick, this will limit the servo travel 50%. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that you can adjust how far the servos will move on the receiver. Well, whatever you adjust that to, this will cut that movement in half. So that way, you don't, you know, you can cut the servo travel in half. And the reason they have you do, you know, have that function is when you first start off flying, sometimes you can overcompensate on the cyclic stick and that'll really get the helicopter flying all over the place, and that's really bad. So if you cut your cyclic movement in half, it's going to tame the helicopter down a little bit and prevent you from, get it, from getting it too far out of control. So that's what this little dual ray switch is. So now this switch over here, what this switch does is when you pull the switch down, this will limit the maximum amount of throttle that you can give the helicopter. And you can change that limit simply by turning this knob. Now, if you turn the knob all the way down, that will limit the maximum throttle to 30%. So that means as you're giving it throttle, you get to 30% and then it stops. And, you, and the helicopter will not get any more than 30% throttle, no matter how high you move the throttle stick. And you can change it all the way up to 80%. Or you can just turn it off and that way you get 100% throttle at full stick. So, again, this is just a little feature to try to make learning fly 
little bit easier with this helicopter. So, but other than that, that's really kind of it for setup tips and uh, pre-flight checks. You can see it's very simple, uh, not a lot to check, not a lot to do in order to get this thing ready to fly. Um, but just take your time with it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me on my forum, myrcguide.com. Uh, and you can find more information about this helicopter on my website, myrcguides.com. I uh, hope it was helpful. Uh, and look forward to the next video in this series. Talk to you guys later.